pretty new to Cervix, I'm pretty new to monitoring as well. Uh, one thing I'm not so new to is RPM packaging. I'm with Fedora, and we're also responsible for the. Sorry. Thank you. And we're also responsible for packages that go to enterprise Linux and are not part of RHEL. And I recently uh, started co maintaining the Savix package for EPL, so you may start throwing rocks at me right now. <laughs> now to something completely different. Um, uh, the Medical University of Vienna mainly uses Cisco networking equipment and they're also using Cisco Prime to manage this equipment but not to monitor it. Zabbix does that. Um, I, was, I was asked whether we could uh, incorporate topology into the monitoring uh, and we found out pretty soon that uh, Cisco Prime was able to export all the neighborhood information for every host it manages um, and identified that as a, a good source of creating all the information we need to create a trigger dependency to take care of topology. Um, while doing so, I quickly discovered we can also make maps, Zabbix maps, out of this exact information. Um, so I started working on this, uh, but it soon turned out things are not as difficult as they initially seem. So this is uh, more like a report on how work is going and uh, which things are very difficult. Let's remind ourselves why topology is essential to monitoring. Uh, one thing is we don't want to get uh, notifications on subsequent failures. If you take a look at this graph here, uh, hosts connected to each other and we have B failing, we won't be able to reach the C hosts from a service perspective. Uh, we might not discover this initially because the first thing we notice C1 is failing, C2 is failing, then B is failing. Um, Zabbix does a decent job in recognizing this via trigger dependency. In the end, after all the data we need has arrived, we will figure out what the root cause was, either B or connection between A and B failing. One thing Zabbix is not as good, as, as good at is showing which is actually affected because in the front and in the dashboard it will show us, okay, B is failing. What does that mean? Yeah. How many hosts have we lost now? We don't know that, but I'll talk on that a bit later. As I mentioned before, we have this export file from Cisco Prime. I'll give you a short introduction of the, uh, the format of this file. I made a nasty little stub of a script. Uh, you can download it and take a look at what's going on inside. It's really nothing that, that creates a final result, but it can give you an idea of how to do what I uh, try to explain here. Uh, what this script does, it just pauses the CSV file. It creates a topology graph. Um, it corrects parts and it completes parts because some connections are simply bogus and not usable in practice. And um, in other cases, uh, we have to have the information on our own because Cisco Prime is only taking care of Cisco devices. So every non-Cisco device will not show up. As we have thousands of hosts, uh, such a map inside Savix would be just very big for one single screen. So we'll have to split it up into smaller parts. And it's still not layouted. We need X and Y coordinates to finally make a Savix map. So we'll have to do layouting as well. And I'll then discuss how to get that all inside Zabbix and how we can keep it up to date. So that's, that's uh, quite easy. Uh, the CSV is one host per line, IP address, host name, SNMP ID to identify which kind of device that is, and the list of all the neighboring IP addresses. There's some more information, but I left that out because it's not important. 
What I'm using is Python and the module called Network X. It's a pretty good suite for analyzing and working with graphs. And within like 20 lines of codes, you can import the data from the CSV file into a graph. And it takes roughly two seconds for 2,600 hosts, so it's pretty quick. Um, in terms of it's organized as a Python dictionary, so you can add additional information for every node and every edge, which is uh, information we're going to use when we create the hosts and like the host group or, uh, yeah, which triggers to, to create or whatever. And we can also do analysis of the of the graph, like which hosts are connected directly, which hosts have some kind of a path between each other. Are there multiple paths even? As I started to explain before, not everything is correct with the graph we initially imported. For instance, for some clustered Cisco devices, you will see intra-cluster connections, but those are not usable for us, so we simply delete them. And uh, devices that have IP addresses in multiple networks will show up as duplicates as well, so you have to merge them. Firewalls are not visible in this dump at all, and can be very relevant. And as I noticed before, non-Cisco equipment is not in there either. Um, you can just manually add it from your plans, uh, query by SNMP what is available uh, by a, uh, what is it called? Well, okay, it's, it's link, a layer discovery protocol, and it's, it's a protocol that's independent, that's supported by many manufacturers. Uh, I also found an, an add-on to Nagios that uses trace route to discover uh, neighborhoods or, or paths or routes or whatever. I don't find this particularly useful because it always depends on the routing. It will never show you the whole neighborhood. This looks a bit more complicated than it actually is. It's a very rough structure of a, a star-like network with like one or two or probably three branches and uh, clustered central switch structure, and C is for SABIC server. Um, as I said, we have to segment the graph in some fashion, otherwise it will turn out just too huge for a SABIC map. And uh, there are different approaches in this which could just limit it on the whole amount of hosts after some distinct top or cut it off after a couple of hops, or have a combination of those, and we'll just split the graph into these pieces to map it later on. What can be tricky is uh, interconnections between uh, different parts. Uh, this is something we can find out by analyzing the graph first, or by simply looking at, at a graphic plot of it. This graph is not layouted yet. We need to layout it, and I'm using GraphWiz to do that, which is a mature and old suite for doing all sorts of graphs. Um, it uses different algorithms. Some of them are more usable for what we do, some are not. 2Pi, Nito, and Circo are uh, three examples of more or less usable ones. Um, if you have been using NagWiz before, uh, this might look familiar to you. Uh, Nagwis actually uses the same um, algorithms to uh, create dynamic maps. But we're not going to use the graphic output of, of Graphwiz. We're just going to use the coordinates to create XML or use the API to essentially create a map. The information we have yielded so far is enough for creating the maps, but we need a bit more information on the host, because trigger dependency is nothing that is directly reflected in a map. 
That's why we need additional information here. It's also a good time to gather some more information, like you could, could look up uh, in your inventory database for additional information you want to add to that host or do a port scan or whatever to just, just create a proper template, apply a proper template. Um, and finding the relevant neighbors for a trigger dependency is not as easy as just saying every neighbor is something we depend on. It depends on where the Zabbix server is. And as you can see here, either A1 or A2 must be fine to reach host B. So in this case, we'd have to create a trigger that checks if A and A1 and A2 are up, and as long as one of them is fine, you can reach host B, and otherwise you'll have to make the trigger dependency on this. Uh, while this is a simple example, this can become very easy, uh, very hard to, to recognize in a, in a complex meshed network. And now to the, to the really interesting part is how will we get this in? On an initial import, we just set up topics from scratch. Um, XML might be a good way. It is transactional, so we will either import everything or nothing. It will be in a consistent state. And that is all fine. And we're not dealing with, with manual changes we have done before and the risk of losing them. Um, but if we already have some information, and for instance, we are relocating some host and dependencies change, this is something we, we can't um, put into action with XML because it uh, does not delete hosts, it does not delete items, it does not delete triggers. It will only update them if they have the same name or ID in the case of DSI. Um, and it will add additional ones, but it will not delete old ones. On the other hand, doing it via the API is not transactional in this sense, because these are all single operations. You can't bundle them together. You might end up in any kind of state. Uh, so we won't try to use this for an initial import. It will also take a lot longer. And the order is important, which should not be the case for XML imports in version 2. And the real challenge is uh, to keep that working, to allow people to make manual changes and to um, change your information as you have retrieved it from Cisco Works. Um, and, and the system must survive adding hosts, deleting hosts, putting them somewhere else in the network, disabling them, uh, putting them to maintenance mode, all that must be consistent, and this is not a very easy task, in my opinion. At least not with this approach. So, you might say that approach is, is rubbish, after all. Those maps are static. Trigger dependency is not reflected. If I changed a host, it is, not, it does, it is deleted from the map if I delete it. But if I locate it otherwhere in the network, this is not reflected. And that is true. And therefore, I put together a little wish list. Somebody suggested on the forum that it would be a better idea to dynamically create maps based on trigger dependency. I think this is a good idea. I think it's arguable whether it's a good idea to uh, automatically try to discover neighborhoods and, and put up dependencies within Savix because this is something you can't do from this perspective. You need a higher perspective. And I just learned about NAV today. Lucas uh, mentioned, it in, mentioned it in his talk. And the second wish, and there's a Zabbix ticket for that, you can't locate a host on a map. If you enter the name of the host into the search field, you won't get maps as a result. And even if you would, this may be a map of 1,000 hosts. Well, you've got to search around a bit. Um, 
as I said before, Zabbix is not doing a very good job in visualizing dependencies on the map. There's a ticket on that as well. Uh, right now it's probably grayed out, it still looks green. And the real problem I found was the following. We're back to this graph again. Imagine A's and B's being networking equipment and C being a server. And the networking equipment is maintained by the network group and the server is maintained by a server administrator. So, B fails. It's basically a problem of the network. If you put up trigger dependency on C and say we won't notify uh, the server administrator if his server goes down because of a network failure, he won't notice his server is down. A customer might call him and say, oh, my service is not working. And he'll panic and, and uh, try to reach the guys from network. And if that's in the middle of the night, that's not a very pleasant thing. Uh, on the other hand, if you did not implement trigger dependency, uh, he'd get a notification, your host is down. Okay, so I'll get up, find out who's responsible, I can't ping it, no idea, probably network, who knows. In an ideal world, the server administrator would get a notification that says, your host is not reachable because the network is down. And I tried to produce just that and I used a, a combination of uh, some fancy triggers and trigger dependency and it worked on a small scale and in a particular topology. But it's not maintainable and it's very brittle. Deleting one host will silently break everything else. It's a very sad thing because it did exactly what I wanted. You could basically reach everybody. You could also reach the, the network admin and tell him uh, because of your failure, this and that is down if you don't filter it out. Um, anyway, my, my approach failed and I think it'd be a great idea to implement it in server because the server basically knows all the, the, the layers of the dependency chains of a trigger. And instead of just masking it out, like he gets no notification, everybody could be notified on the root problem instead. Yes, um, I think I'm basically through. If you have any questions, feel free to approach me afterwards or ask your questions now. Thank you. Thank you, Walker. Does anyone have any questions? Do you have any screenshots of the generated map? Sadly, no, but it looks exactly the same as usual. <laughs> now, the reason for this is I, I made up some ugly code and it worked for 1.8 and I didn't find the time to change it to 2 XML. One thing I forgot to mention is you can jump within the segments of map just using the basic mechanism for drill down, uh, creating an element that, that jumps to the next map. The only thing which you need is that exported data from LMS. Or uh, I mean, if uh, I make this data from another source, it's possible to make same map. If, if uh, uh, for uh, for example, if I take uh, network administrator visualize it, and uh, I will do export in format like uh, Cisco LMS, so uh, I am able to generate that map, or do, do you need some more features from Cisco? No, totally, that's enough. Thank you. Uh, I was just thinking, and I wanted to know whether you'd looked into it or thought about it yourself, with regards to the notifications to um, relevant server administrators, to actually using um, the actions within Zabbix and um, probably having a script which detects the names on the interfaces of the actual switch, which would then perhaps use a, a escalation email to the relevant parties that's saying this server, this switch is down, um, these are all affected so hosts. It works on the first level, because on the direct neighbors. Ah, of course. But, yeah, yeah. but not, not all direct neighbors are necessarily affected. 